Cheers, friends. I'm Tony Sacamano from Left Hand Brewing Company, here to talk about some beer. Uh, got milk stout nitro. Of course. Cheers. Of course. Cheers. Yeah. So, first thing, uh, I don't like to have a full glass when I'm tasting beer to get to know it. So I'm going to take a drink. Let's cheers. Take a drink. All right. All right. Well, so, first of all, that's delicious. For the people out there, yeah, that is delicious. That was your guys' staple beer, too. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so for just for people watching, uh, today you're going to be walking us through how to taste beer correctly Correct. and what to look for and in different types of beers. We have two different beers here. I'll let you go ahead and introduce introduce those later as well too. Sure. Um, yeah, go ahead and we can jump right in. All right. So we're going to check out just different aspects of beer. First of all, an overwhelming portion of your perception comes through the aroma. So if you're not smelling a beer, you're not enjoying the full essence of the beer. Mm -hmm. First thing we're going to start though is both these are stouts. I love stout beer and we have two killing stouts here on tap and I wanted to drink stout beer. So so here we are. We're starting with Milk Stout Nitro which I'm sure a lot of you know. Uh, check out the color. Check out what it looks like. So we're going to hold it up. This is a black beer. It's dark yeah. brown. Right? Dark, dark brown. If you see some you see around the, the outside of the glass, you're going to see some brown, some highlights. So I'm not, I'm not going to call it a black beer, but I'm going to call it nearly black beer. Uh, holds foam on the outside of the glass quite a bit. This is a pretty viscous beer. It is uh, a very foamy beer, right? which is good for like for a stout though, you know, because right? it gives it like that milkshake kind of flavor yeah. taste esque to it. You know? Yeah, it adds to the body of the beer as well. Mm -hmm. Nitrogen is an important factor in this beer. This is one of our nitrogenated beers. What that means is that we use a higher concentration of nitrogen rather than CO2. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a blend of the two, but okay. this one is mostly nitrogen. Okay, a lot. I feel like I, I didn't know that and I feel like a lot of people don't know that when it's nitro, it's still, there's still like carbon in there, yeah. you know, it's still like carbonated. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, that's good to know. That's it's good. almost an inverse relationship of the normal relationship in a CO2 beer. Okay. A lot of times when you're pouring CO2 beer, there's some nitrogen in that as well. Okay, cool. Uh, what does that do to the beer? Nitrogen. First of all, as we look at this beer, uh, what do you think about the bubble size of the head? Um, I mean, large or head. small? Larger head, larger bubbles, yeah. What about the bubbles inside of the head? You know, each individual bubble as opposed to this beer? Where you see a little bit. Yeah, I guess it's smaller. I can see Pretty that. Pretty small, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I think, so nitrogen creates really small bubbles. Okay. Uh, what that does is it uh, creates a more velvety texture to the beer. Kind of almost, I don't want to say chewy, but I'm going to say chewy. A little bit velvety. That's my favorite word, actually. Velvety. Velvety, <laughs> velvety texture to the beer. Uh, that's uh, a good word for it. That's right? a good word for it. <laughs> I think so, too. Uh, we do do this as a carbonated beer as well, and it's amazing the differences between the two. I've had both, yeah. They're, it is, would you say, I don't know, I guess the way I would say is like with the, with the nitrogen, it kind of just tastes uh, more milky? Is that smooth and milky? Is, is, that, is that like how to do it justice, or how exactly would you explain the difference in taste between the sure. two? Sure. So what's the fine taste? Okay. So the four aspects that I like to talk about when we're tasting beer, tasting beer or experiencing beer, uh, first is the visual, we're going to look at the beer, second is the aroma, third is uh, taste, and then the fourth is the mouthfeel. Mouth feel. Okay. So when I think about that milky taste, I think I get a little bit of that lactose character, that cream, yeah. uh, dolce de leche character in both of those, both those beers. Mm -hmm. However, with the nitrogen, it really emphasizes the creamy texture. Yes. Creamy mouthfeel yeah, rather than the creamy taste. That's a good way to put it. Okay. Cool. Shall we get into this beer? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Let's First do thing it. that we're going to do uh, is excite the beer a little bit. Oh boy. We're going to hold it underneath our nose just to an area where we start to perceive the beer. Bring it up. All right. And analyze the beer. Hold it. Cut. What, uh, what are you picking up? Coffee. Yeah, absolutely. Great call. Yeah. I get a lot of coffee in this beer. That's from the roasted malt that we use in this beer. Uh, so there's not actually coffee in this beer? Correct. It's just roasted malt. Yep. That correct. tastes like coffee, or that smells like coffee. Very reminiscent of coffee. Cool. I get quite a bit of coffee. Uh, for me, this is uh, very espresso-like rather than cold press yes. or anything like that. It's like yes. a clean espresso character. I also get a, a, a handful of uh, milk chocolate, too. I really think milk chocolate. Uh, the simplest, 
it tastes like a mocha, you know? It's like the if you were to put it into one one thing, it's mocha. Okay. It's coffee, it's cream, it's chocolate. Yeah. It's that character. That's, that's a good way to put it. That's where I'm at. Okay. So that's the first profile. Then we're gonna kinda get into this beer a little bit deeper. So there's two ways to smell it. There's like the general, like just kind of let the aromas come in, and then there's the get deep down inside there. There's a lot. There's a lot more than that. <laughs> However, uh, diff different components uh, are triggered by by your olfactory glands or trigger your olfact olfactory glands differently. Okay. Uh, so you're gonna in a very short list. We're gonna start from a, a distance. Okay. Then we're gonna do a, pa a drive by, like oh, that. Okay. We're gonna do that drive by. Then you're gonna do a quick sniff, like a one second in the nose, pretty much in the beer sniff. Then you're gonna do a longer two second sniff. Now, if you're at a bar, you're not gonna go through this whole process. I totally understand that. But for but the sake at, of reviewing beers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Each one of these will highlight different aspects of the beer. Some are better for roast characters, some are better for caramel like characters. Some will help you spot any potential defects in the beer if you're going to a new brewery or you're judging your own home brew. Okay. Uh, different, different ways of smelling beer will give you different profiles, they'll make different profiles sound out. Uh, really the two that I like to use regularly, if I was limited to two at the bar, uh, first of all is, is the one, kind of one second nose in the beer, so that sort of a thing. For me, uh, that's really hi highlighting the uh, sweet condensed milk, latte, like character, caramel, latte, chocolate. The other one I like to do, try not to breathe in your nose, take a drink of the beer, well take a breath, <laughs> Take a drink of the beer, and then exhale, swallow the beer, beer exhale through your nose. Okay. It's called retronasal. It's going to trigger the back half of, of your orthonasal, well, your nasal passage. Orthonasal being the front, retronasal being the back. Okay. So that's what we'll do. Take okay. a breath, take a drink of the beer, uh, swallow the beer, exhale through your nose. Okay, while you're doing that, um, what should you be looking for and when? Like, what should you be looking like which flavors should you be looking for during it, or like, if that makes sense? Does that make sense? Because like, breathe, like obviously exhaling through your nose, um, you're obviously gonna probably be focusing more on the aromas a little bit uh -huh. more so. Uh -huh. But like, what when is like the good time? Like, what is the most optimal time to start detecting or start really trying to pick out certain flavors in the beer? Sure, I, I know this beer. I know this beer very well. Uh, I drink a lot of this beer, I serve a lot of this beer, I talk people through a lot of this beer. However, when, I, when I'm tasting a beer uh, new, I like to kind of have an open, open slate. Mm -hmm. And when I'm telling somebody to, uh, how to drink this beer, I like to not uh, give you trigger points. Because if I tell you what you'll, to taste, you'll start to bam, know. boom, yeah. it's going to be there for you. Exactly. Uh, and I use these different ways of smelling beer to kind of highlight things that I might not expect to get out of that beer. Okay. Uh, different ways to, it just, the beer becomes more complex. Okay. Which is always pleasant. Yes. I, I enjoy that. Exactly, you know, right? exactly. Uh, however, it would be surprising to find anything other than what we've already targeted in this beer. This beer is uh, very coffee, uh, very uh, caramel, uh, sweet and condensed milk more than caramel, I think, uh, and milk chocolate. Mm -hmm. Those are the primary features. You're gonna find those in the retronasal, but you might find them differently. I know this beer well, so there's nothing really good that's gonna surprise me yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, through this process. Uh, however, in, in, uh, when you're getting to know a beer, it really will come, uh, those, those different ways of smelling beer will come, will come through. Okay, cool. All right, let's do it then. All right. It's a different experience. It is. It is a different experience. And I mean, the fun thing about that too is you not only get the flavors in the beer, but you also get the flavors in the beer at different times, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Absolutely. Like for instance, I got the, the coffee was primarily the aftertaste, not the beginning. At the beginning, I primarily got like the milk chocolate and the like condensed milk and the condensed cream. And then at the end, I started to get the coffee taste. Absolutely. So it does kind of put it in, in more of a phase. Then. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had Vietnamese prepared coffee? I have not. You take this little press 
and you put it over the top of a cup with a little bit of sweetened condensed milk in the base of that cup. And essentially you add hot water to this coffee and use this little press as it kind of drips through the coffee grounds onto sweetened condensed milk. Okay. That was, that's where I was at when I was drinking this beer. <laughs> I was totally there. It was totally Vietnamese prepared coffee. Okay. That's awesome. Hmm. Would you say you get that every time you try it, or is it, or is I, it just sometimes? It was a little you do? that that time specifically. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of beer that we, we brew at left hand. We we pour and that I drink at left hand, uh, and I love this beer. But I've I've been drinking more Pilsner. We've been brewing some more IPAs. I've been drinking that. So I haven't went back to Milk Stout in a minute. I've drank Sawtooth, drank other beers, but it's been a minute since I've went back to Milk Stout. So I think you could tell by my expression. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you I were was pleasantly happy. surprised. You were really it was delightful. I know the beer and I love the beer, but that was very delicious. <laughs> so, so would you say that you like, would you wish it in your mouth when you drink the beer? Do you uh, recommend that? No, no. What you don't, what you don't want to do is agitate the carbonation too much so that it's just foam in your mouth, of course. But uh, I, rather than swish, I think chew. Chew it, okay. A little That's bit. a good way to put it. A little yeah. bit. Hold it in your mouth a little bit. Uh, one of the things about beer that we're dealing with, uh, especially in beer tasting as opposed to wine tasting, is that bitterness is a, is a key component in this. We get a little bit of bitterness from the hops. We also get a little bit of bitterness from the dark coffee-like roasted malt. What That's going to add a little bit of bitterness. So you said this, so this does have bitterness in it. How many IBUs does it have? It's a low number. It's a low number. It's a low number. But and enough I, to I, detect. I, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Uh, with the lactose sugar in this beer, there is some residual sweetness. To keep this beer in balance, it does require some bitterness. And another thing about IBUs, or a thing about IBUs, uh, IBUs are strictly a judge of the amount of I summarized alpha acids inside of the beer. Okay. Alpha acids are a component of hops. Okay. It only judges the bitterness of hop compounds. Okay. So when you, uh, other things can be bitter. Coffee can be bitter. Uh, well, in beer, it's pretty much roasted malt mm -hmm. and hops that are really going to give you that bitterness. Sometimes alcohol can be perceived that way, but yeah. it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, so the bitterness compo uh, compounds that come from roasted malt are coffee-like fit flavors. Uh, are not judged by an IBU. Okay. IBU okay. is a kind of single dimensional yeah. unit of measurement. That makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Word, well, uh, thank you for doing this. I appreciate that. My pleasure, Gabe. Yeah.